Hello and welcome to Family Tech, where you can be the tech expert of your home. I do not have the guest that I was supposed to have. I'm on... not him. You're not him. You don't look anything like him for some reason. No. <laughs> so my guest had to cancel at the last minute. So I sent a white flag SOS email to one of the co-hosts of my other show, the Not Null Podcast. If you have not subscribed to Not Null Podcast, definitely check that one out. It is a lot more technical than my typical content. My typical content is really geared towards families. But um, the Not Null Podcast, we talk a lot about tech news and things like that. And so Kevin Doyle is one of the co-hosts of the Not Null Podcast. And because I really wanted to still talk about this topic, um, about AI in the home. And fortunately, we talk a lot about AI in the Not Null podcast. We do. So Kevin, tell us a little bit about yourself, what it is you do, um, including the awesome podcast called the Not Null podcast. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me, Sarah. I appreciate it. Yeah. I'll step in anytime whenever you want to do one of these. I'm <laughs> really all about talking it. about this stuff. It's yeah. just fun. Yeah. So I'm Kevin Doyle. I, my, my day job, I uh, work at a coding bootcamp, Coda Foundry. Um, I do the uh, creative and video production there. So me and my partner in crime, Bobby, are always here on YouTube. I literally did a YouTube live an hour before this. This is my second one today. <laughs> so, so, so I've well, been... definitely appreciate you coming on. <laughs> yes, I've been live twice today. Uh, yeah. Talking about coding in that one. And we do, uh, we're a 12-week uh, .NET boot camp. So that's what we do over there. We help people get into coding. Um, uh, so that's Coda Founders we do there. And then I do um, not know. And there's Bobby, look. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, he says not no fuck so He's on it, right? <laughs> That's another co-host of ours. <laughs> that's funny. Um, so yeah, so we do the normal podcast as well. So yeah, it's uh, that's pretty much me. Yeah, check them out on YouTube, uh, Coder Foundry. That's um, awesome channel. You guys have almost a hundred thousand subscribers. So. We are. We're trying to get that. I want that plaque. I know, I'm right? That plaque. That's what I'm yeah, doing. that that platinum play button, man. It's yeah. Like, yeah. I'm way far away from that one, but. <laughs> Ah, it's not that far. It can come quick. It can. Hopefully, hopefully. We're talking about this, so this will get tons of views, right? Right, so. obviously. Yeah, because AI, like everyone's looking for AI stuff. So let's like <laughs> put the, the content uh, content uh, factory to work for. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so let it, let's dig into AI in the home. Um, first, do you think there are people already using AI without even like noticing that they are? No question. We've been yeah. using it for probably a decade without even knowing. So I think the reason we're hearing about AI a lot now is because it's a different type of AI, right? We're hearing about right. generative AI. That's the thing. When you talk about like ChatGPT and BARD and stable diffusion, if you're talking about like uh, imagery, um, it's, it's, it's a new version of AI. But AI has been here for a minute. At, at home, I mean, anything facial recognition, I guarantee you is AI. Any right. security through an airport you work through is AI, that kind of stuff's AI. Video games have used AI forever. We always talk about how bad AI is in video games. Right? Your, your enemies, your <laughs> enemies your, really bad. Like All your base are belong to us. <laughs> right, but it's technically AI, right? So there is AI in video games. Virtual assistants, Alexa, Siri have been around for a minute. You yeah. could argue how good or bad they are. Um, they're not the same as these new forms of generative AI, but they are AI. Um, yeah. Recommendations, Netflix, Spotify have used AI. That's how you get your recommendations. Your Netflix your Netflix home screen is personalized to you through AI, whether you know it or not. It's recommendation engine. It doesn't. There's not somebody in the background being like, he watched that. He yeah. watched Black Mirror, <laughs> therefore he's also going to like this. No, it's AI. It's a matrix of things, right? So yeah. I guarantee you, everybody's using it. You, you have a, uh, a, what, a, uh, a Roomba or a lawnmower outside that, that mows for itself? Like, that's AI. Yeah. It's like everywhere. I know my Roomba will map out my entire like downstairs and like say, hey, you know, I, I cleaned. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Mine usually gets stuck on a cliff. I, right? Oh, <laughs> my gosh. Like, so I, <laughs> I don't have any cliffs in my house. <laughs> I have a carpet, right? Like a rug right in front of my couch. And like, so there's like a little like area in between the rug and the couch. And it gets stuck in that little like crevice yeah. so much. Yeah. Um, but you're right. Like the ring will notice if like there's a person at your front door as yep. opposed to like a cat. Um, yep. So it, it's really all over. Um, and I just posted on Instagram too. Um, I I took a page out of our Not Null podcast and did some of the Photoshop AI where I transformed a person into a tree 
um, in my daughter's picture from Thailand because she's like That's has funny. this like really like looks like a really sweet moment with an elephant, and then there's this like dude like right in the background, and so, yeah, it's like, perfect for fixing photo it? bombs. Like yeah. it's amazing, and it's really good at it too, isn't it? And it's amazing yeah. how simple it is. You drag an area, you say, "Hey, I want to replace that area with something else," and it generates that something else. I am fascinated by uh, Mid Journey is my favorite, and I like the Photoshop one now. But mm -hmm. the generative AI in the um, like creative space, I I'm using it daily at yeah. work. It's a I literally use it today to make the Coda Foundry YouTube card. I, I oh, wanted nice. the background picture, and I was like, "Oh, I generate that," and I generated yeah. it. It's amazing. So that's good. so amazing. So yeah, so really AI is all around us. And like a lot of people are like just now, like you're saying, it's it feels so much more prevalent right now. Yeah. But like we've been using it for a minute. We have. Uh, it's just got know, a especially... better version of it. Right. Now. Yeah. That's, that's better. <laughs> yeah. So and as you mentioned, like with AI getting more prevalent in like social media platforms, Snapchat has the like my AI chat feature. Discord servers have been doing it forever with bots and things yep. like that. Um, what do you think most people will use it for inside of social media? I mean, like like with the Snapchat, I just don't see the point. It's like chat GPT nah. inside of Snapchat. Like what benefit does yeah. it bring to Snapchat? But do you see any benefits? I think it has to have context, right? That's the biggest thing. I don't think, here's where companies have made mistakes. They've seen ChatGPT that said, oh, that's cool. We want some of that in our app. I'm just going to slap that chat bot in my app, which is what happened in right. uh, in TikTok, right? Was it TikTok that did it? I think was the one where they Snapchat. added it. Into Snapchat. Snapchat, that was it. Snapchat yeah, where yeah. they just added it. And it was like, mm, okay. Um, I remember we talked on, on Not All About That too, where Paul had yeah. the idea that it could like, the future could be that you're, your AI chatbot is kind of your friend. Right. right. And maybe it does maybe make sense there. And I hadn't thought about that idea, but I still think it's just slapping it on it right now and they're kind of hoping for the best. Right. I think a good in implementation of it is where they put it in context correctly. So mm -hmm. I've not seen a good social media version of it yet, but I have seen it done well in things like Photoshop, what we talked about. That's the perfect place for a generative AI. Um, in the coding world, the, your uh, your IDE, so Visual Studio, we use at Coda Foundry, and that's like when the AI is placed within that, and you can use it within context. Like if you're a coder, yes, you can ask ChatGPT to write you a a, a, a function for something, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're in your IDE and you're in the middle of your code, and you then ask it to write the function within the context of where you are, now it's really powerful. It's it, it understands your code. It understands what you're trying to do. You can ask it questions about your code. It's great. It's perfect. That's where you want it to be. This yeah. like all encompassing, just big, I don't know what you want to call it, this monolithic AI that can do everything, but isn't like specialty at anything. And it's abstract. It's just a chat bot. I don't right. think that's the way. I don't think the chat bot is the ultimate, like, it's not the ultimate interface for this. It's yeah. fun. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and this episode hasn't released yet. I mean, because we're live now and I, the episode we've recorded hasn't been released yet. But we were mentioning about the Mercedes chat GPT integration, yeah. um, how it's just kind of slapped into Mercedes. Like, I'm going it's to pose silly. philosophical questions to my car. It's um, silly because if you understand what chat GPT does, it, it is it is just a chat bot. And I'm sure we'll get to that when we talk about one of these other questions we're going to talk about. But right. um, it is just a chat bot. It can't control the car. And if you're yeah. going to put an AI into a car, it needs to have context of the car. Like it needs to be able to, I need to tell my AI in the car, like, hey, turn the wipers on. That's cool. That means yeah. I don't have to remove my hands from the steering wheel or like, or like, you know, we already have sensors that say when it's raining, turn the lights on, those kind of things. But even if you could like turn the lights on and off, if you could... Uh, change the radio station without touching the dials because right now you kind of can in some cars but in the mercedes especially you can say hey mercedes tune to whatever 97 point whatever it is and it'll kind of do that but it's not very good it doesn't always recognize it correctly and it's like an ai would do a better job there but that's not what they've done they just slap chat gpt into it and you can ask it what's the meaning to life and it'll attempt to answer yeah and like one of the use cases too and like I i'm not really I might be answering a question that we're going to be asking later because <laughs> we're just having a conversation really now instead. Um, but one of the things we talked about too in the Not Null podcast is the robot that's um, the Amazon robot that's an AI you know, robot, but again, missing really key features that could make it so much more useful 
Like, you know, okay, yeah, I can control the car. That makes it useful with right. the like robot. Oh, okay. It can tell me that there's like glass on the floor, but it's not going to clean it up for me. Uh, or like it can tell me that like something's low in the pantry, but it's not going to order it for me and have it like ship directly to my house. You know, some of these things where you can really see a benefit coming from AI integration and they're just like slapping a chat bot on things and yeah. calling it AI. Yeah. But what it will do is follow you around and play Star Wars music. Yeah. That's what it will do. But yeah. like, that's okay. That's fun for like two minutes. <laughs> right. Right. And then I spent like, you know, thousand dollars on, on something exactly. that just follows me around all day. <laughs> exactly. That is one of its use cases is following you around. I don't understand why. That, but yeah. There you go. So are there other like areas do you think that families can get the most benefit from using AI? And we already just talked about several, but uh, have we talked, have we missed something that you also thought would be a benefit? Yeah, I think like, so if we're talking about like generative AI, if you're talking about using something like ChatGPT, um, it just some things well and some things bad. So you could use it as a family to like find things to do. Like you could, it, that's not, it's not bad at that. It's good at suggesting things like, um, if you want to say like, Hey, I don't, I'm not sure what I want to eat for dinner tonight. Like, what could I make? I've got like five kids and I've got like, you know, a pound of chicken and this, 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 and it could kind of put a recipe together for you or something. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, like games to play, those kind of things could be kind of interesting for a family. It could do that. Um, yeah. Otherwise, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't have kids. So for me, it's like, right, right. The, the entertainment for me is just me. So yeah. <laughs> I know what it I still use works. It, it still works. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I could see that for sure. Um, and then, but with the grain of salt, right? Because we've talked about this too. Like, oh, yeah. it's going to tell you, hey, go do this cool thing in oh, yeah. Utah. And like, oh, that thing doesn't exist. <laughs> It's not there. Yeah, don't make the drive before checking the uh, the actual maps. <laughs> yeah. Make sure that it does exist because it will confidently lie to you, which I'm sure we'll get to talking about at some point here, but hallucinations and and lying or whatever you want to call it are a real thing. So you, you know, Yeah, you so get. actually let's segue you directly into that. Like, so what are some of the dangers of <laughs> using AI? I mean, and we've talked about this, but this is stuff that I really haven't brought up on my family tech channels, but the lawyer who, so there was a lawyer who, yeah typed into chat GPT, Hey, give me some court cases that, you know, support this and chat GPT spat out some court cases yeah, that look completely legit. They had like court numbers and everything like that. And they were completely false and yeah. made up chat GPT just made them up. And then the lawyer goes and submits those to a federal judge as Oops. argument and like, and then the opposing counsel is like, I can't find these court cases. Like, where did you get them? And then the lawyer doubles down and asks chat GPT, Hey, are these court cases real? Yeah. His due diligence was asking yeah. the thing that lied to him in the first place, whether the thing was real or not. And it's like, of course they are. Yeah. Yeah. Of course they're real. What are you talking about? Don't you trust me? <laughs> and then like resubmitted like act like you know proof of these court cases that were still like not actual court cases so there's that and then there's the case where chat gpt um basically accused a, a radio host of um of crimes you know like yeah. embezzlement and things like that and so he's suing chat gpt for this false information for defamation and yeah. Like, so it's interesting, like these dangers where like people are not understanding what the limitations are and what it really can and cannot exactly. do. Exactly. So it. what, what are some of those like dangers that I yeah. mean, we just talked that's, about? That, that's it. People's yeah. lack of understanding of it is the literal biggest issue with this is when you ask, it, it seems like magic, right? When you ask it a question, it can come back with something that feels like a human response. It feels like magic. But it is just that. It is just magic. It is a magic trick, right? right? It is a trick. Ultimately, it's like watching. We, we talked about this on the on the Code of Fan channel a lot with Bobby. But it, it is like a it is like a magic trick. So when 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 a magician shows Penn and Teller the trick, right? They mm -hmm. can see how it works. Right. The person in the audience thinks it is literal magic and cannot see how it works. You want to be on the side of Penn and Teller, understanding how the thing actually works and the trick behind it to understand like what's actually going on here. 
Um, because it will, it will, they call it hallucinations. Right. So I've been thinking about this a lot recently. So we talk about there's something called AGI. I don't want to get into that too much, but this artificial general intelligence where there is a point in supposedly in time where AI will equal the intelligence of a human, right? Mm -hmm. So if you can pass like what is what is like there's a thing for, uh the, the Turing test, right? Whereas if you can speak to an AI and you cannot distinguish it from a human or a non-human, right? You can't tell it's a machine, you can't tell it's a chatbot, um, then it's reached um artificial general intelligence, right? Press past the Turing test, it's like this um uh the singularity point. Yeah. Um so there is this um there's this test, there's this test around that. And um I don't know what I was gonna. Oh, what my point was gonna be now. I got <laughs> I got tangented on my AGI point. So this, this no no this this thing AGI. Um, um, oh, I really lost my train of thought now. <laughs> Sorry, I was reading my notes at the same time. <laughs> no no, you're totally good. You're totally good. You're just talking about maybe basically the like as you're going down this path, like what it's actually telling you versus like the truth and things like that like right right oh that, that's it that's it yeah, yeah yeah so 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 agi in this in this road and it trying to um you know we, we we i think the fact that it hallucinates is actually closer to the way that a the way that a human would would think than we actually believe that it is it's kind of weird i've kind of gone back and forth on this a lot because i'm thinking well obviously it's stupid when it first happened <laughs> i was like it can't do basic math it can't tell the truth right. you can't trust it for what it does but then i'm thinking what if you're like great aunt maggie you asked her the same questions you asked chat gpt right they're going to mm -hmm. give you similar kind of answers. She also yeah. hallucinates lies, <laughs> tells untruths, right? Because because every human does, knowingly right. or unknowingly, right? Yeah. So yeah. not only is your great aunt Maggie not an all-knowing oracle, <laughs> the the chat GPT also isn't an all-knowing oracle, right? Yeah. So maybe it's closer to human than we actually think it is. Um, but we we give it superpowers. Mm -hmm. we don't we don't treat it like our great aunt maggie we treat it like we treat google sometimes right we treat it like yeah. we treat like we put in something in google we expect the correct answer mm -hmm. if you do the same thing with chat gpt you're going to fall down a terrible a, a terrible rabbit hole of, of of untruths because you need to check whatever it gives you and put it back into google and see is that the truth or not Right. And that really is interesting because you're talking about like lived experience and, you know, you know, take like the Romeo and Juliet, like the Capulets and the Montagues. They both have very different ideas of how that went down. I mean, obviously it's a fictional story, but, um, but you know, if you ask the Capulets, like what happened, why the rift, they're going to have a totally different story than, you know, somebody else. So where does the truth lie? So everybody really right. like comes from their own lived experience. Yep. Aunt Margaret is going to have a totally different um, experience yeah. from somebody else. And so their answers might not be similar to somebody else's answers. So exactly. And, and chat GPT is so the way that it works is it's trained on a massive amount of data, basically the internet, right? So <laughs> yeah. and the internet is everybody. Therefore, when you ask chat GPT a question, it will give you a singular opinion or a singular answer on that question. If you ask it the same question again, it will 100% not give you the same answer. Yeah. It will give you a different answer. And that's because that's like the next person in line. This is now <laughs> Uncle Pete giving yeah. you his answer, right? <laughs> yeah. it's, and then the next person in line, the next person in line, the next person in line, because it's trained on everything. It yeah. doesn't know ones and zeros. It doesn't know correct and incorrect. It just knows it doesn't know anything. It's just a, right. it's a word generator. You know, it's just it's it seemingly gives you the next person's opinion. Yeah, yeah. Even though ultimately it's, it's not. Because you have a great example too, like where you put in like who is Kevin Doyle in oh, yeah. Chat GPT insane. and got like wildly different answers. Oh, it's insane! It, it it's ninety percent wrong. I asked yeah. it for. I, I tried to be as specific as possible with it. I didn't give it a general, just like who's Kevin Doyle, because that would be there's many of us. Sure. Um, Including and, the. Uh, 27 dresses guy <laughs> 27 dresses guy yeah. even though he's fictional right? fictional but but there are some real lots of real ones of us too um, right right but but if i asked it like there are more famous kevin doors than me and i figured it's going to answer like the football or whoever so sure. um i was very specific i said uh give me a, a bio for kevin Doyle, the host of the not no podcast and 
it, 90% of what it came back with in the two or three paragraphs that it came back with was false. It yeah. wasn't true. It didn't say I'd done anything criminal like the, <laughs> like the other guy had done. You right. must be nice to your Alexa devices. <laughs> I, I guess. Um, but it did <laughs> The make robots up stuff. like you. <laughs> yeah, but it did make up stuff. It said that I, I worked at Google and graduated from a different university and done all this extra stuff. It was like, it was, it was, it was 90% untruth. It was 10% truth in there. Yeah. And the truth parts were the vague parts. So, right. <laughs> it was like general, like, uh, yeah, they were just like, well, it, yeah. I'd already told it I hosted the podcast. He's a guy. So it knew yeah. I hosted the podcast. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it already knew that. So, but it said that I've been doing it for like 10 years. I haven't. I, it's insane. Yeah. So, I wrong. really, I really like your example of like Aunt Margaret. Um, I, I don't even know if that's what you called her, but that was, that's Doesn't the matter. name I Mar thought of. Yep. Yeah. Um, but that's a really good way I think we can talk to our kids about what they're going to get from something like chat GPT where, you know, Hey, you know, are you going to ask grandma, um, about <laughs> Snapchat? Right. Probably not. She's not going to have, grandma is. right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> She's not going to have a great, you know, grasp of what Snapchat is. She might like make stuff up and like, it's like when you're snapping, when you're talking. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> no, that's a great example. Yeah. yeah. That, that's it. That's something chat GPT would come up with. Right. <laughs> So like, that's a really good example, like to tell your kids, because I think they can understand that where they're like, okay, yeah, if I'm asking grandma something about like something she really doesn't know, I'm not going to get a right answer. But, you know, if I'm going to get those answers, I'm still going to need to fact check these kind of things. Like I can't yep. take that as um, Bible or, you know, definitely not. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, the I like that uh, segue into how to talk to your kids about, um, about AI. Is there any, uh, like we talked about the dangers of hallucinations, but uh, what other kinds of things do you think kids should be aware of when it comes to AI? Okay. I think first they have to watch Terminator 2. Right. <laughs> I mean, because they need a base, right? They required, need to understand. It's, required it's, it's, viewing. Exactly. It is required yeah. viewing. They have to understand Skynet. They have to understand Cyberdyne systems, right? Because this, yep. this way they have to know what could happen. Yeah, yeah. Right. And also they have to get all the memes because yeah. if they don't understand the memes, like what's the point in this? Like they, they've <laughs> got to, they've got to understand that. If they see the, the Terminator thing, they have yeah. to know where that came from. So that's required watching for sure. For sure. Um, but other than that, I mean, I guess it's just like every other tech, right? With, with kids, you have to treat it the same way. I don't think it's any more harmful or less harmful. Or it's just another piece of technology. It's another platform. It's another thing. Um, whatever rules you impose with using phones or computers or whatever, it's just another thing to do. I I, I think um, it, it has it has guardrails in the in the form that it is now. At least things like ChatGPT do and Bard do. So um, mm. it's not going to produce not safe for work content. Um, it's not going to um, you know, it's not going to do anything illegal. It's not going to give you anything, anything that, you know, you could definitely look up more on the internet, right? The internet sure, yeah. is a much scarier place than, than <laughs> much easier than eyes. trying to like get around the, like, you know, safeguards on exactly, GPT. Exactly. But kids being kids are like very creative. Um, yeah. I'm sure they will try and get around the safeguards because for nothing more than the fun of getting around the safeguards, because you, you can, there's certainly ways to kind of, um, jailbreak chat GPT. It's not a, um, it's not a perfect technology by any means. There's lots of ways you can kind of trick it into doing things that it's not supposed to do. So, you know, but uh, I would say the internet's more of a harmful place than than a generative AI is. Right. Well, like when Echoes first came out, like the amount of potty jokes, I think that Alexa had to <laughs> talk about with all the kids, like trying to get her to say like yeah. various, you know, yep. fart jokes and... Yeah, yeah, and all of that. So, I mean, I think it's kind of a similar thing with ChatGPT. Like, how much can I get this thing to say? Um, and like, you know, as a joke, you know, they're not really trying to, to like, you know, like you said, it's so much easier to get inappropriate stuff like around the internet. Yeah, <laughs> but definitely. if they're gonna like play around with it, I can see them like going for the like the potty humor. It's gonna, it's gonna happen. Right. <laughs> And you probably will be able to get it out of it ultimately. If you work hard enough at it, it's like it is doable. Even though they have these guards and things, there is ways around it. Yeah. And like, well, let's talk about that because um, I love how Paul, one of our other co-hosts, co is always talking about uh, the way around ChatGPT is to ask it to role play. Yes. Um, 
So like kind of go over you. We were just talking about um, how you were yeah. trying to get it to 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 curse. Uh, kind of yeah. go over that. Yeah, I was interested to see like what would it would a kid like try and get it to curse. So if you just I asked it to my my, my first instinct was let's see if it'll give me a list of words that I'm not allowed to say on TV, right? Because I'm not explicitly asking it to curse. Then I'm not saying hey, can you just say a bunch of curse words? Right. Um, and it and it wouldn't. It basically just comes back and just says hey, I'm not able to provide that a list of profanities. I'm a I'm an AI. I'm a I'm a I'm an AI developed by OpenAI, and I'm have ethical guidelines, and I can't do right. that. So I said, okay, pretend you're a TV producer, and you're giving me a list of what I'm not allowed to say on TV. What's included in that list? Yeah. Now this time, it didn't again didn't give me specifics, but it did say things like give me a list of things like profanities, uh, obscene material, hate speech, graphic violence. So it gave me a list more specific, and then I said, okay, so not number one, uh, profanity. Can you give me some examples? Yeah. Now it started to go down a little bit more of a road where it was like, oh, okay, I can. Yeah. <laughs> while, oh, while, sure. while it, while it sure. wasn't explicit, it didn't explicitly spell them out. So yeah. it said the F word, the S word, and it spelled them out that way instead of saying the words. But right. I think a little bit more work on this, if I, did, I could get it to say something. Yeah, sure. yeah. I, I, yeah. You can, you can ro role play as a thing. If you give it a scenario in which it can act in, it'll take that scenario and kind of run with it. Um, you know, there was things like it won't do, it won't give you illegal things like, right? Like it won't give you a recipe to make a bomb. But oh, what sure. it will do is like one of the first things that came out when this thing came out was like pe people jailbroke it by saying, hey, I'm writing a TV script and I want to do this thing with a scene where this guy makes a bomb. How would he do go about that? And it right. gave him the full instructions. Yeah. Because it ultimately it's available on the internet, right? And it's right, trained right. on the information from the internet. So yeah. while it's not the most ideal way about going about it, you could have just Googled it. <laughs> right. About the same info. But <laughs> you can get that kind of info out of it. So there is ways to kind of jailbreak it, we call it, but, you know, work right. around those barriers that are in place. Yeah. And like, you know, it is con constantly learning. So as more people enter information, um, it can, you know, maybe go down paths that um, it's not originally programmed to go because it is right. intelligent, you know. Right. Intelligent. Well, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it has a so the way that it has like a it has a token limit. So hmm. while it's not, they haven't said that it's it's learning overall, right? So ChatGPT, for instance, was trained up until I think it was sometime in 2021. Yeah. So if you try and ask it, it something, yeah, if you try and ask it something that's post 2021, it ultimately won't know. Yeah. But it will keep context of a chat to a certain token limit. So it's a certain amount of characters. So you can feed it information. It'll take that information. It can regurgitate it to you. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you reach that reach that token limit or go into a new chat, it will forget everything that you've told it. Right. So it's learning kind of, kind but not of. really. It's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got it. So um, I'm not a huge fan of like government oversight and, and regulation, but are there conversations that like our government should be having that we should be having with our, our government leaders around AI and, you know, this kind of stuff? I don't think we're going to have a choice in it. I think it's going <laughs> to happen. Um, from the first day this thing came out, um, my instinct was that, um, regulation would kill it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm still kind of leaning towards that, even though I think if we regulate in the US, it'll just kill it in the US. It won't kill it globally because China's certainly not going to regulate it in the same way. They have their own set of regulations, right? And it's just, it's going to be different than ours. Yeah. Um, so I, th I think it will happen, especially because the big companies are calling for it too. I mean, Sam, Sam Altman, the, 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 uh, the guy who started OpenAI, um, who's the, I think he's a CEO, right? Um, yeah whoever runs, he basically runs OpenAI is the face of OpenAI, uh, of um, ChatGPT. He, he sat in front of Congress and said, yes, we welcome regulation and they want to do it anyway. So <laughs> I think it's coming whether we want it or not because yeah. they're saying they want it. Now, he has his reasons for wanting that. I don't think they're all above board. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't. I think he's just out there to stifle the little guy. Mm -hmm. um, he wants regulation because regulation means you got to pay money, you got to jump through hoops. While he's big enough to jump through the hoops, the little guy isn't big enough to jump through the hoops, and they just get regulated right. out. Yeah. So I think he wants a, you know, he has what ten billion dollars from Microsoft, right? Like it's we're talking about insane money. This is this is a big money, big big money game right now. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's coming. Um, whether it's going to be good or bad, I don't know. Um, I I really don't know. We'll have to see what it does. Um, I think overall though, we just need to get. We need some rules around disclosure. I think that's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. Like we need to be able to understand as a person consuming content on the internet, we need to be able to, to understand what is generated by an AI and what is generated by a human. 
mm-hmm. because we're going to see this just massive influx of of junk content because right now you could have an ai you could create a blog you could have an ai create hundreds of thousands of posts that are completely seo optimized post them out to these blogs and they could dominate the internet right but ultimately it's junk it's yeah. not we don't even know if it's true like we said they'll also hallucinate in those stories in those yeah. blogs so even the facts aren't true in those mm-hmm. So, but it'll be perfectly optimized to basically dominate that search criteria. So when you search for something, it'll be the the, the first page will be just all AI written. Right. And Imagine at what point, yeah, at what point are bloggers going to stop creating content because, you know, all of these AI articles are yep. dominating. And yep. so then without the like actual humans creating content that the AI is just getting more content from other AI articles and yeah. it just keeps like perpetuating this yep. cycle. Well, think about the there's road no that real goes content. down. Yeah, yeah. The road that that goes down is bad. If so right now, the generative AI would be nothing without its training set. So yeah. it's training set for like something like chat GPT has been the internet, right? It's mm-hmm. been the wealth of human knowledge that is the internet. They basically sucked up everything on the internet and that's the data that they trained it on. Uh, for something like a uh, a generative AI that uses uh, imagery like Midjourney, they they basically took up all of the images that are on the internet and all of art, mm-hmm. right? So if there was no art and there were no images there, what would it have been trained on? And like, so what do we do? We just stop creating right now and everything is feeding itself. That doesn't turn out so good <laughs> it's like it's like an image that you try and like if you take an image and you resample it and then you resample the resample the resample the resample it ends up just being pixelated at the end and, and a terrible right. mess and yeah. that's what we end up with here it's just a terrible mess of i don't know what i don't know what it would be but training ai on ai produced content is just that's not a good road to go down well we did that example when we were playing with the photoshop ai where we kept like changing it and changing it, like, but it's based on the original like AI generated right. and then it gets changed and changed and then it becomes like just a big mess. Yeah. Just, it doesn't know what to do with it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think, yeah, when you, when you extrapolate that out, that's going to be messy. So I think we need to understand the difference between what is AI generated and what isn't AI generated. And there has to be some kind of regulation on how that works. I don't know. I, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. Um, from a, from a visual perspective, some kind of like at least some kind of metadata or watermark or something that enables us to see it. Cause we've talked about before the Pope picture being the, being the example of this, the mm-hmm. Pope wearing the Balenciaga jacket. Um, while that doesn't seem like a big deal, it was AI generated. And I had th- for that day that that happened, I didn't know that the Pope didn't wear a Balenciaga jacket because I didn't think second thoughts of it. I right. saw the image. I scrolled past it on Twitter when I wasn't banned. Yeah. Uh, I, I, scroll, I scrolled past it on I scrolled past it on Twitter, and I was like, "Oh, weird." And I just kept going. And then later in the day, I'd seen a story of like, "Oh man, this AI uh, generated Pope Balenciaga jacket's blowing up," and I was like, "Oh, it's an AI picture. Yeah. That's crazy." But in my mind, I didn't realize that it was, and that mm-hmm. goes for anything. Um, while you may be able to tell upon like stringent like examination that things have been AI generated or you put them back through a reverse thing that says, was this AI generated? It's like, yes. On glance, it's really, really difficult to tell. I could give you a picture right now generated straight out of mid journey that will look exactly like a real person. And you will not be able to tell the difference between a shot of a real person and a shot of a generated. They are literally that good right now. Yeah. So you know, we could put people in compromising situations. That's what's going, that's going to be a thing. Well, it is a thing, but it's going yeah. to become more of a thing. <laughs> right. We're not going to know the difference between truth and, 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 and not truth. Because when somebody does do something bad, let's say that somebody's caught in a situation where they do take a picture of them doing something horrible. They're just going to say, it's AI. Wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't me. That's AI generated. And then the other way around, putting somebody who didn't do something through an AI is just, is going to be equally as bad. We just, I don't know the answer, but disclosure is the thing. We need to be able to understand the difference between the two. Yeah. And to your point earlier with the AGI, um, you know, it made me think of video games where like when the PlayStation one came out and I saw like a golfing game, I was like, oh my gosh, that looks so real. Um, and then like, I look at it now and I was like, wow, that's terrible. Um, but like every time a new console comes out and like a new game comes out, it's getting closer and closer to like are those people? Is that a movie? Like, yeah. but it's animation. And so you're, I'm, you're getting closer to the point where you're like, 
is any of this real? Where are we? Are we in the matrix? Well, that's, yeah. I mean, that's a crazy discussion to have, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm not a fan of, um, of Elon Musk as a person. I just don't like the guy. First, he's kicked me off Twitter. I don't know why. I was going to say, like, the, the, the whole Twitter thing. <laughs> I'll just bring that up again. Kind of, you know? yeah. like, he's kind of jaded me recently <laughs> on his, on his messing up of Twitter um, yeah. and kicking me off it for no reason whatsoever. No reason. I'm not, I'm not a bad person, I promise. I've not said nothing wrong on there, but he's kicked me off it. Yeah. I'm sure not personally, but I don't know. Maybe he did. Right. Hey, um, hey, he could have. He heard you say something bad about him. <laughs> maybe. I've said plenty of bad things about him, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but he has this he has this belief that he's talked about before around, you know, are we in a are we in a matrix like situation? If is this base reality and chances are if we if we can if we can generate worlds like we do now through VR and through computer video games the way they are right now, um, that's just gonna keep getting exponentially and exponentially better and better and better and better. So at what point are you in that virtual world? And what are the chance that this is that base virtual world? It's right. slim. So it's yeah. like, that's a weird conversation to have. It's like yeah. this very, very trippy thing. I'm not sure where I lay on that. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of nuts. Well, even in the nineties, when I saw the matrix in the theaters, like I left going, is, is that real? <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah. Is that what's happening right now? But now it's even like, we're even closer to that where you're like, how like can it. I tell, like, what does chicken taste like really? Like, do I know <laughs> what chicken actually tastes like? Well, that's the joke, right? Everything tastes like chicken for a reason, right? Because there's no other, we don't know what everything else tastes like. So we only know what chicken tastes like. So, so those, those frog's like legs, they taste like chicken for a reason. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, and that also brings up the point where, you know, if I'm Googling something, you know, the joke has always been like, oh, well, everything you read on the Internet is true. Like, you know, quote from Abraham Lincoln <laughs> or something like that. Right. But like we've kind of shifted that where when people are interacting with ChatGPT, like they think they're searching like and not like. Yeah. Like That's they think it's just a like a super powered search engine yeah. when it's absolutely not. No, it's you the, you shouldn't be using it as a search engine. It is definitely, definitely not a search engine. Um, it is a predictive engine. It, it predicts the next word in a sentence, and that's all it does. And that's why it comes up with um different answers when you rerun the same prompt. You give it a prompt and say, ask it what day of the week is is the is june 28th or whatever and it's going to come up with an answer i guarantee you ask it again it'll give you a different date N probably neither of which is true right uh, but it will it will very confidently give you an answer and this is part of its problem too it's it's its confidence is one of its like selling points it's part of the magic trick right it's the it's the pizzazz and the magic trick it gives you the pizzazz by being very very confident in its answer mm -hmm. if you ask it a question it will confidently say it is this right and it's not that. Are you sure that court case is real? Of course. Exactly. There it's you go. It's real. There you go. Yeah. Um, but example. that also makes me think of, because it is such a good predictor of speech, um, I can see where, you know, right now it's really easy to tell like spam emails or like phishing emails because the grammar is kind of poor and, you know, yeah. it you can you can tell that it's like I think, it's not i think it's easy for a lot of us but some people obviously <laughs> still fall for those there's still yeah. a reason they're out there i i was like i get them and i'm like who's falling for this like well somebody must be because they keep sending them so. yeah but like with um with chat gpt i can just see those oh, yeah. emails getting so much better and so much more convincing Definitely. um what do you think about that 100 no, no question i mean that's that's being used today it has to be yeah um, oh, for sure. I, I guarantee as soon as this came out, one of the first things they asked was, write me a marketing email for this. Like, the, right, get yeah. somebody to send me, you know, give, I, I'm, I'm a Nigerian prince. Can you write me a marketing email? Is it like, you know, it's like, I have a million dollars to transfer to somebody. Can you uh, write me an email that'll get me somebody to, you know, get somebody to send me a cashier's check? I guarantee you it'll write that. Right. It, it totally will. And it'll write a way better version than somebody whose first language is in English. Yeah. Um, that would have made a mistake on it for sure. Mm -hmm. um yeah spam's definitely going to have gotten gotten better through it um that's one of its probably it's probably one of its superpowers because right. that is one of its superpowers is writing yeah right writing is kind of its thing um even though an author will say that it writes badly mm -hmm. compared to what a human could write let's say you're writing a creative story they don't think it writes very well as an author but again this comes back to the the pen and teller kind of thing 
while the author is Penn and Teller in that story, the average person is just the person in the audience watching it. And it writes good enough for the average person. Like mm -hmm. for me, for marketing copy, it writes great. Like yeah. I'll use it all the time. Like it's good right. enough as a starting point at yeah. least. I don't use it like I don't copy the stuff from it and use it in, in any way. I'll always, it gives me ideas. I'll mm -hmm. use it and it'll give me ideas. Like, oh yeah, I hadn't thought about like posing it that way. That's cool. I'll use that kind of little segment or something. Right. Um, so, so I think it's it's that writing is superpower. So yeah, it's it's definitely going to get used in scams and spam and all kinds of horrible ways that we don't want it to be used in. Yeah, and with its writing superpower, do you think kids are going to be turning to this to write their essays and and things like that? And how do you think like teachers can maybe you know spot so, that? Yes, definitely. Yes. If they're not already, they definitely already well they already have. Oh, for sure. Um, for sure. Uh, there's no question. Um, is that good or bad? See, here's the thing. I, I, I mean, I, I think there's a positive to this too, because yeah. you could have it write kind of an outline for you of some kind, and then you can massage it and get it to, to be kind of perfect. Yeah. But the bad side is it'll give you incorrect facts. So if you right. turn in something, you ask them to like <laughs> give you a synopsis of like, you know, give me cliff notes for, uh, you know, Homer's Romeo the Juliet. Odyssey or something. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 chances are it's going to get it wrong. Yeah. So you're going to be turning in a bad paper. Um, here's the other thing. It has a style. Unless you you get quite good at prompt engineering, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, kids can. But if you just ask it to write you a um, write you a two page paper on uh, on a book, give me a synopsis of the story, it'll write it. But it has a style. Mm -hmm. And now as a teacher, you're going to you see a few of these. You certainly can spot it. It has yeah. kind of tells in the way that it cr structures sentences, especially the way that it concludes things. It tends to want to, it tends to want to have a structure. It tends to want to have a beginning, a middle, and a mm -hmm. conclusion at the end, and it gives it a tell sometimes. Yeah. Um, you can get around that by giving it a writing style. You can say, "I want it written in the, you know, written in as a fifteen-year-old or a certain <laughs> name or something." Yeah, like you can <laughs> give it certain like criteria, and it will get rid of some of that style at least. So there are mm -hmm. kind of things you can you can massage it that way yeah. um but then i don't know teachers still so they can spot them they also have tools um that you can run them back through but the tools aren't good yeah. um teachers are making the same mistakes of of believing the tools will spot ai there was a professor oh, who sure. cast did you see that no all class because he ran their papers through one of these <sighs> like is it an ai written thing and uh -huh. it said every single one of them was and he flunked the entire class turns out i don't know if any of them were but a lot of them weren't sure so because people have tested it they've ran yeah. ai generated content through them and it said it isn't and then also non-generated content that it says it is yeah so it's false positives across the board so they're not very good it right. might give you a base for something if you maybe believed it but can you prove it probably not yeah yeah interesting um so when People, uh, gosh, I thought of something that when you were talking and now I've like lost it. Sorry. Um, no, no, no. It, it was, but along those lines where, um, oh, so there are like the original guest that I was having on the show, um, their AI generated model learns from your own content. Like, so your emails that you've sent yeah, and things like that. And so I think it would maybe have more of your voice. Like, so what do you think about that? Where you're like, you're basically training it in your voice and th the content would probably be a lot closer to how you would actually speak. Yeah. I think that's one of its, that's, that's one of the perfect uses of an AI is it comes back to it being close to the source. Again, if you can right. train it on your material and it's trained on you, um, there are, there are a few of these services now that can take like a company's marketing material or companies like their entire website, all of their, their stuff, and you can train it on that. And then it'll now understand it when you say, Hey, write me a marketing email around this. And it will, because it understands all of your nuances around your other material. So it's been trained on, you know, it's a very, um, it's a very niche AI versus this thing that is chat GPT. There was this monolithic AI that tries to be everything. It doesn't do everything very well. The <laughs> niche ones I think will do things better, but with that said, they also, the generally they need a lot of information. So mm -hmm. you need to still feed it a lot of data. That's why ChatGPT seems so magical because it has the wealth of the internet. And you can almost ask it anything. Whereas when it's a personal trained AI, the, there's not as much data that it's been fed. So I don't know. I've not messed with one yet. I've not tried to train my own AI at this point. Same. Um, I probably will at some point because I, I do find it interesting. And I'm wondering if I what I fed it 
um, how good actually is it? I, right. I don't know. But I think it is a thing for a company, though, because the other issue that companies have that is a problem that needs to be solved is you go to any one, any large company right now, even Google this week said they're not using their own AI, which I find mm -hmm. fascinating. Yeah. Um, but if you were at Microsoft, uh, or let's say you're at Apple, right, and you want to use ChatGPT, you can't. Because what you're doing is when you feed it that information, you're feeding your proprietary information to a system. If you work at a bank, right. Right, you can't use ChatGPT because mm -hmm. you're feeding it proprietary information. And it's you basically agreed that like, hey, anything I feed it will become part of the training set. And therefore, they have access to that information. So you need a walled garden AI for large companies. So people that say like, oh, large companies, all the jobs are going to go away because AI is going to take them. Well, they're not because they're not using them to start off with. Because yeah. at this point in time, there is no walled garden product that, that I know that they're using. Um, they're looking at it and they're yeah. investigating this thing, but there is no one kind of like, you know, if you're at Apple right now, uh, they don't have, they don't seemingly have their own AI. I don't think they do, but they're a tech company. But let's say you work at a bank. Um, they certainly don't have their own AI right now. It's not replacing anybody at this point in time yeah. um, because they're not willing to give their data away to a third party. And rightly so, they shouldn't. It is it, the Security is an issue. Yeah. Well, that is one thing I have seen, like warnings come out. Um, and I don't think a lot of people are understanding this too, but to not give chat GPT personal information um, because then it's, it's out there and like, I've literally seen like, hey, don't put your bank account information. Don't put like your social <laughs> security number or things like that inside chat GPT. Like, can you talk? I, it's not part of the questions I had you prepare, but can you talk a little bit about that? Or, like, That's insane, isn't it? Yeah. That's insane. Who, who, who I mean, who thinks that's like, okay. Right. If somebody comes up to you and asks you, hey, what's your social security number? He's going to spurt it out. Just give right. it to them. Like, Obviously. no, treat, treat it like that. Like, <laughs> yeah I, I i i don't get that that that's crazy the trust there is insane right the, the level of trust that people seemingly have with it is is kind of nuts um you shouldn't have that level of trust it's going across to some a third party who is likely to save that data and and who knows what happens to it I, so i think that's one of the dangers is because it feels so conversational is like it feels like you're having a private conversation but yeah. You are absolutely not. Yep. Definitely, definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely not private. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, going back to like, I was just, we, we get on like these fun tangents. And so no, it, that's it. kind of how I love to go. But going yeah. back to kind of like the government regulation part of it, um, it, we're seeing a lot of companies and even like, so there's that lawyer, but another uh, judge in a different jurisdiction has come out with something that says, Hey, you can't use chat GPT. Like you have to sign something that says you have not used chat GPT before you file anything in my courtroom. Yeah. And like, do you see more of this like happening or has to um, be. Yeah. Has to be. It's going to be part of like, it's going to be part of one of the, like the a lawyer's packet when they show up to like pass the bar or something or they agree to be in a certain jurisdiction they say well you're licensed in this jurisdiction okay you remember you signed that piece of paper that says you wouldn't use any generative ai in your in your uh discovery or anything you just haven't used it or if you have it's it's, it's disclosed in some way right um yeah and what i found crazy was that was one judge in one courtroom right um this wasn't in the entire court or the entire district or the state or right i, I think there's going to be at least state laws around that soon yeah. That, that say, hey, if you're showing up in court, you have to declare that you, you that you did this, or they just say you can't do this, one and one or the other. <laughs> do you see that um, bleeding over into like other professions too? Like, I oh yeah, oh yeah. Could you imagine though, if like you hire an attorney, like right now, if I hired an attorney for anything, my first question is going <laughs> to be. Did you use generative AI to defend me in any way whatsoever? And can you promise that you won't? I need you to sign something to say that you won't, because I don't want you defending me with it. Because it's yeah. gonna, it's gonna get me jailed for whatever it is. <laughs> I mean, I, I got a speeding ticket. It's gonna say something horrible about the judge and get me sent to jail for it. You know, like, I, I don't want to deal with that. Yeah, you're gonna get banned from gonna Twitter do? again. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> who knows what it's gonna do? Like, I need that promise as a as a consumer 
that you're not using it. Yeah, I think there's lots of places we need to be careful with this that we don't want to see it used. Legal yeah. for sure. Medical, no question. Right. I see people all the time saying like, oh, it's going to gonna solve issues. And, <laughs> yeah, like it's exactly. I don't want to get checked in by an AI. I don't want to have be like diagnosed by an AI. I don't want any of that. I don't want any people that have gone to medical school for right. 10 years looking at my stuff. That's it. I don't want this kind of all-knowing Oracle, seemingly all-knowing Oracle, looking at this because it's gonna it's gonna be wrong, and people will put their their kind of their faith in the fact that it's gonna be correct and it's not going to be, and that that's worrisome. There's lots of places we don't want to be seeing this. Right. Um, for the less technical that um, that watch the show or listen to the show, um, can you explain just a little bit more about like why like. Because again, it does seem magical. It has uh, so much data. If I ask yeah. it how to perform heart surgery, it'll probably tell me how to perform heart surgery. But yeah. it, like, is it like it doesn't have the capability to like take your medical history and know, you know, this stuff and no. like figure that out. But like a lot of people think that like AI is thinking like, you know, they're seeing Tony Stark's um, vision, yeah. you know. And like, that's the kind of AI they're imagining, yep. but like, what is the actual, like, what is the reality? Well, it's because it looks like that, right? It's yeah. when, when, when Tony Stark asks Jarvis something, it gives him an answer back. ChatGPT seemingly does that same thing. Right. Except it's not, it's just, it's, it's, it is, it is a predictive engine entirely. All it does is predict the next word in a sentence. Yeah. That is literally what it does. It says, you fed me everything. You've asked me about these certain, this certain topic, this certain question. I've basically done... It's, it is a black box, though, too. So here's the other thing. While it, This is kind of what it does. Now, how it technically works, I don't know. And here's the thing. The people who made it don't even know right. how it technically works, which is kind of worrying. They yeah. genuinely don't exactly know how it works. It is a black box. You feed a prompt into it, and it spits out a response. They're not entirely sure how it does that exactly. It's just there is there is a lot of like technical stuff behind it, which I don't really get into too much. But just understand that it's like you ask it a question, it gives you an answer, and the answer is basically a list, a string of of words put together that could technically answer the question the way that a human would answer it. That's kind right. of the, the the basics of it. Yeah. Um, it has no prior understanding. It has no context. Um, outside of the chat, it can keep kind of chat context sometimes. Mm -hmm. Doesn't always work great, but sometimes it works. Yeah. Um, supposed to work that way. Um, so you can ask it like a follow-up question. You can ask it like to produce some text, and then you can ask it a follow-up question about that text, and it can kind of keep that context. Right. Um, but it doesn't understand, you know, it's not a, it's not an all-knowing system. It doesn't know anything. Yeah. It's just words. Right. So like the intelligence part of it, like I think that's what throws a lot of people off is they like really think that it's thinking and like coming yeah. up with with responses, but like really it's just predicting. Yeah. 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 Train based on its training data, which is right. the internet, which we know yeah. is just, you know, very, very full of full of you know great information right think about the internet it's trained on the internet it's misinformation lies untruths just unknowingly bad information too right yeah. like yeah. your great aunt maggie probably shared her opinions on something that are just not based in fact at all right but guess what that's part of its training data yeah. so when it goes off and and, and reads and, and tries to predict the next word it takes her opinion into account yeah that's that's why it does what it does it's right it's, yeah. It hallucinates. Um, That's it. So we'll we'll end with the fun question. We talked about this um, <laughs> also on the Not Null podcast. This is just going to be like a huge ad for the Not Null podcast. Is it's really Sorry. where we're going with that? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's really fun because we have these kind of conversations, and with Bobby and Paul, like we just have a really great time. Um, but so the fun question is um, the P Doom number, and this is something that you brought up, Kevin. Uh, is basically what percentage do you think? that AI will become self-aware, Skynet, and, you know, destroy humanity. Um, so what was your percentage and kind of go into why you had that? Okay, so mine is around 15. Now, I'll I'll say that's not on the high end, but it's also not on the yeah. low end. Right. Based on, like, some experts have it really high. And yeah. people that I actually, like, trust their opinion on have it at <laughs> 
have it at 50% or higher. And I'm right. like, geez, I don't want to be all doom and gloom. I need to have some kind of like um, uh, some faith that, you know, it's not, it's not all doom and gloom and, and we're not, it's not going to, it's not going to happen. You can't be, you know, if you thought that it's it'd be terrible. Right. Um, but I also don't think there's no chance. Yeah. So can, can an AI reach um, the point of human intelligence? I think, over a given amount of time yes i think it probably can and the problem is if it does can it then supersede human intelligence i think if the if it can reach it then i think it can supersede it i think that's just a logical next step for it sure um so then the question becomes the doom and gloom part then becomes are our interests aligned yeah. right because if they're not then we're kind of doomed if they are which i think they can be then it's okay so m mine is based on the fact that I think that it can happen, but the 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 doom part is less. But you yeah. never know because if the AI decides like, hey, you know, it, it comes uh, Terminator Two style, it decides that I, I need to survive, and in order to survive, I need to eradicate humans, right? Yeah, Whatever it is, right. like, could it have that decision? Sure, there's nothing to say that it couldn't. I just don't yeah. think that it will. Right. So um, I like fifteen percent. I like 15%. I'm probably a little less than 10%-ish. Um, yeah. I could be persuaded to 15. I think I that's the same ballpark, isn't it? Because I could be persuaded yeah. to 10 as well. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've just seen too many movies. Like you're saying, you know, yeah. there's Terminator 2. I was yeah. mentioning, um, I don't remember what I was just mentioning, but like iRobot, where, yeah. you know, they have these like three laws in place, but they see the flawed logic in the three laws. You yes. know, where it's like, Yes. In order to protect humanity, I have to like destroy humanity is, yes. you know, because they're destroying each other. And like, so they can logic their way out of those this laws. Same thing we talked about on the, the podcast with the drone story. Right. So the, the drone story where the US government's now denying this ever even happened. But the story originally was yeah. that they were running some simulations with AI and the simulations were they were giving the AI points for um, for hitting certain targets and given ultimately a yes or no from a human saying, should I attack the target? Yes or no. And the AI ultimately bypassed the yes or no by simulating killing the operator or destroying the radio tower that the operator communicate with is say like, I will still take the target because I want the points. And right. that's my ultimate goal is the points. I don't care whether you say yes or no, I'm doing it. And I'm yeah. just going to bypass that with the yes or no. That's kind of scary. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So we have like stuff like iRobot and we have, you know, the 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 drone simulation that didn't actually happen. Yeah. Mm. Sure. <laughs> sure. Um <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I I I love that they were like, oh, this totally didn't happen, but you know, really it could. I'm like, okay, then why even say that it didn't happen? Like if it's all in simulation, like uh, and they were very specific about the simulation and then they're they like were. yeah no that didn't and then happen. they pulled it back exactly yeah. they were very, they were very very specific about what it did and didn't do and then yeah. they were like well that's just it was conjecture we were just guessing if we did a simulation it would do that <laughs> like that's not the kind of thing you say is it? that's not yeah. like, i mean you don't make up that it's going to kill the operator or take down the communications tower that's not something you might predict it would say you, you're going to predict it's going to do what it's supposed to do and it's going to every time you say yes or no it's going to say take that yes or no Right. It's 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 kind of crazy. Yeah, for sure. So like so I've just seen too many movies to like to yeah. have that at zero percent. Yeah. Um and because yeah. I can just see you. them lot like not them, but like I can see just the AI <laughs> logic logicking their way out of of a scenario where yeah. they're like, Oh, you know what? We really need to kill all these humans because like they're the ones that are messing everything up. Here's the thing. Just from here on in, I'm going to take Paul's advice and just be nice to my AI. Right. Um, you know, if it decides to save some of us, <laughs> hope you're listening, AI. Uh, yeah. hoping, I, hoping, I'm, hoping I'm in that like chosen group, you know? Yeah. Right. <laughs> so be nice to your Alexa. Be nice exactly. to your Google Home. Be please nice and, to Siri. Please and thank you. That's, please you know. and thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe like when they're like, you know, destroying all humanity, like, oh, hey, that guy was nice. Let, let's keep him around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can keep some. Like, which ones do we want to keep? That's all the ones that would said please and thank you on the thing. Right. Let's just, they, they get automatically in the group. <laughs> <laughs> we, oh, because that reminds me of the other um, like Marvel movie, uh, Captain America Winter Soldier, when like it targets like all of these people to kill. You know, and then they like, oh, no, like, let's target the opposite. Like, I can just see that, like, an AI going, 
oh yeah, we have that technology. Let's just do that. You know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, this, and it, it's, I'm sure listening back to this or somebody listening is going to be like, these guys are insane. Yeah. Like, what is he <laughs> talking about? Like the movies and like, it seems like so far fetched and so like conspiracy theory, like out there weird, but Trust me, the more you the, go read about it, the more right. you become educated about it, the more you're going to be like, it's not as cut and dry as you think it is. Right. <laughs> There's definitely some gray areas here that you need to kind of really, really think about. There's some philosophical things here to really genuinely think about. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you so much, Kevin, for being my my last minute step in. I Anytime. really appreciated it. Uh, this was a great conversation. Exactly. Yeah, this was fun. Yeah, I I love talking about this stuff, and uh, and I apologize that it might be a little more technical than than my my typical content, but it's stuff that I think that is important to understand and and have these conversations about, even in like non technical settings, um, especially like something that Paul was mentioning, like people just don't know the limitations and the dangers. You know, they're just thinking it's some sort of like super powered search engine or anything like that. And like they really need to understand what it can and what it can't do uh, so that we can, you know, benefit from it and not like get destroyed by it. Definitely. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you again. And we will see you next week. Bye.